Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Championship Leadership Podcast. And today we got Vinny Berry from uh, Rochester, a good friend of mine, and also just came through our uh, uh, the, the Unleash the Leader Within experience in Des Moines, Iowa earlier in November. It was a three-day event, uh, incredible event, and then also came and helped to run some support on the backside of Championship Leadership 24, which is CL24 in Vegas. It was kind of back to back. So he, he, uh, he traveled the world with me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks for being here, Vinny. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, I would love to talk, you know, because it's kind of unique that you had been at both. One as a participant, of course, at ULW, the Unleash the Leader Within Experience and uh and then and then got to see what cl24 was about as well helped us to run operations uh which is a which which is a lot there's a lot that goes into that and and we really can't do that without someone like you to help us out there but i would love to to get your take on both experiences from both sides so maybe first start with um the three-day in des moines ulw experience how what what uh, what were some of the bigger takeaways you had from that um, you, you know, there, I should first start by saying, you know, at a three day event, man, there's a lot that's thrown at you Yeah, and, right. uh, it, there's little nuggets of wisdom and little, uh, idiosyncrasies to our lives that, you know, we just lose sight of, we lose track of over the course of time. So, uh, you know, I think that, I think that the one in Des Moines, the one that I was a participant for my takeaway was, uh, I got to find my why and I got to commit. Uh, and I, you know, we listened to you and we listened to two or three different other speakers and, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, presenters, you know, that are captains of what they're doing in their industry and their space and their time. And, uh, you know, it really struck me to, to find my, why, why do I do this? Why am I at work? Why am I talking to you? You know, why, why for all kinds of stuff, but you know, what's the reason behind who I am? Um, and I I haven't found that yet. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, yeah, but yeah. I'm looking and I'm searching and, and you yeah. know, we, we do these deep dives, you know, we did a lot of exercises there and, um, you know, it's uncovered a lot. So uh, my takeaway was be intentional with life, you know, don't just kind of flow through it. Yeah, I was uh, just, it made me think of something as, as I was reading the book here. Um, I can't even remember the name of it right now, unfortunately, but, uh, but it's, it has to do with, um, pers- oh, it's, I believe it's called person that personalities are not permanent, um, which is a little bit unique because we all kind of tie our identity to our personality. There's all kinds of personality tests to take. And this is kind of taking that opposite stance of like, you know, he, he, he starts out the book with the, the author, um, how a personality test almost like ruined his marriage before it even started, basically how, uh, they took tests. He was a white. She was a, like a blue or something, right? Crazy. And the family's like, oh, those will never work together. The family's telling her not to marry him and, and uh, because of his personality test. And anyway, so. Yeah. Uh, but in that book, you know, it just talks about what you're talking about with the why is essentially if you don't have the why, then then the work is, is going to feel um, almost insurmountable, right? And, and uh, overwhelming and, and you, you're just not going to want to do it. Like to, to continue to show up and do the things that you know you should be doing, a lot of times we don't do because we don't have that strong enough purpose driving behind it. And mm-hmm. it is, it's, it's, it's true. And we hear everyone talk about it. And we might even know that it's true, but a lot of times it's also kind of elusive to really figure out like, what is that for you? Uh, so it's, it's cool that you just, you're actually spending some time to do that because a lot of people will just make something up that isn't really it. And then it, you know, it just, it's not going to work that way. So, yeah, yeah. It's, not, and, and, you know, I think getting back to what you're saying with the personalities, um, you know, you, you kind of got to think of yourself as an actor sometimes, right? So my personality can be um, I guess, I don't know, my personality can change from moment to moment from, experience to experience. Um, and, and I've learned that over the course of time, you know, keep your face malleable, like the actors, right. But mm-hmm. um, I, I'm not, you know, I, I need to find, I need to find my why. And I, and yeah. I gotta, I gotta figure that out. And I didn't yeah. prior to going to prior to going to the UWL or ULW experience, I was like, I'm just going to keep working because that's yeah. what you do. Right. Right. You got wife, right. you got kids, you got bills, you do whatever you're doing. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's, that's a big takeaway. Great. 
Well, let's let's talk just a little bit more. Yeah, we you did mention we had a, we had three other speakers. We had a uh, Zach Babcock, the podcast um, expert. We had Jake McLeod, uh, expert, worked with a lot of different um, influencers and, and business owners and entrepreneurs over the last five years inside of video, done a lot of great things. And he's just a very incredibly talented video guy. He, he came and spoke to us on video and then Mike Young, really from a branding, marketing design type perspective, more branding and who you are and, and trying to figure a lot of that out and, and how do we tie that message to what, what it is that, you know, to uh, in a way your personality, right? And who you mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. as a person. So, um, so yeah, it was a jam packed three days, but the day one we started with a lot of the physical stuff, which I know a lot of people were kind of uh, anxious and nervous about, especially some had experienced me in other uh, events where I was a bit more intense in those surroundings and environments than I was at ULW. But maybe talk a little bit about what that was like on the first day, kind of in that first morning. And, and so what did you get from those experiences? Sure, sure. You know, uh, one of the things I noticed right away is that when you, you would give us direction and order, if you will, uh, either to sit down, get up, you know, do, do something, a menial task, right? Uh, you gave it a time frame. And, uh, you, you know, I hadn't, I've been coaching kids, uh, football, uh, baseball, soccer for 12 years, 15 years. Um, and I wouldn't always give them time frames, but I would, if I needed them to run or to compete or to do, you know, whatever they're doing. Um, but the time frame thing for like sitting down in, in the room, right. Yeah. Uh, or the time frame thing, like, Hey, you got two minutes, go there, do what you're doing and get back. You know, I, I thought that was, um, I, it, it just kind of woke me up, you know, yeah. not, not that we were in trouble, not that right. uh, it was just, it's like, Hey man, have a little purpose to what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I think the first day I, I was nervous as hell about physical uh, issues, right. Or yeah. issue. there's my issue. Um, but being able to run or jump or compete or run up and down that damn hill, um, <laughs> you know, I'm pretty buoyant. So I wasn't worried about with the water, but uh <laughs> Uh, I, I think other people there were, were extremely nervous about it, more nervous than I was. I think other people there were, um, uh, some were in shape, some weren't in shape, you know, some, you know, it's kind of all walks of life. Right. Uh, although I think everybody knew that, Hey, we're going to get our butt kicked physically, uh, you know, on, on the first day with jumping in and out of water and running and carrying stuff and up and down hills. And, um, I, I thought it was, I thought it was a great time to not use your brain right? Just yeah. to unplug, just to yeah. whatever, whatever's bothering me, whether it's work or play or, or, or the wife or the kids grades or at home schooling. Um, it was just a great time to not worry, right? The, I mean, the, the only task in front of you was to put the weight vest on and get up the hill. Yeah. And that's all you could see. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that was fantastic. Well, I mean, that, yeah, that's definitely a great lesson to take from that of being really just what you're saying is to just really be present with where you're at and what you're doing. And, and uh, if we can all do that, you know, whether it's with our kids, my son, you know, it's been Thanksgiving, just uh, whenever you end up listening to this, we're a few days after Thanksgiving. So we've been home with the kids a lot. And, and my son just, you know, he just wants to hang out with me. He's eight. And uh, I want to take a little time. I like Last night's an example. We'd been doing a bunch of stuff. We were outside, just had dinner, and, and I was going to sit down. I just got this book um, that I've been reading, and I wanted to just take a few minutes to read. And he's like, Dad, play with me. I'm like, oh, man, like, can't you understand? I just want to read and relax. But at the same time, I'm like, all right, you know, you only have so many of these moments. So That's right, yeah. Down and, and he wanted to play chess. So he went and grabbed a game. We played some chess, and, and uh, it was awesome. And uh, so yeah. I'm glad I took that time out. But, yeah, just to be present there and not worry about all the other things that we have. And, and uh, so it's cool that you took that from the physical piece. What, what else? I mean, it wasn't just to work, work you out, right? What was kind of the, the purpose and the intent of the physical? Yeah. I, I, the purpose of the intent of the physical, I think that was to stretch um, our um, perception of ourselves, right. Uh, to get outside of our comfort zone, of course, to, um, you know, maybe understand physicality in a different way. You know, yeah. uh, one of the things we did was we had a workout in a parking lot one of the mornings, uh, the last morning there, you know, and that yeah. wasn't like, man, I'm not in the gym with, you know, slinging dumbbells around or, or you know, running on a treadmill like a gerbil. Um, it was just out in a parking lot, 
So yeah. I, I think that's one of the things I took away from the physical is that you could do it anywhere. Um, yeah. But I think it was to, I think it was to change the perception of ourselves. You know, you had spoke at the event about the, the high school quarterback who threw four touchdowns in one game, you know, and he's still living on that. He's still wearing his high school letterman's jacket, <laughs> hanging out at the bar down the street. And he's just yeah. like, yeah. And, uh, well, that's, that's one way to live life uh, because I'm, I'm always the guy to be careful to say that's not the right way because yeah. it ain't, just because it ain't my way doesn't mean it ain't right, you know? Yeah. Uh, but that's one way to live life. That's not the way I want to live life, you know? So mm -hmm. um, I, th I think that the takeaway from the physical is, hey, just because you're overweight or out of shape or you used to be an athlete or, you know, you're you, you, just because you were something <laughs> doesn't mean you still are something or that you even need to be that something, you know, you can, you can change, you can grow. Um, so that yeah. was important. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. yeah. And so let's, let's switch gears, go to Championship Leadership 24. You come out of the three-day experience and really less than a week later, we're, we're heading to Las Vegas to get everything ready and to run the 24-hour leadership event. Again, through the physical, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a leadership experience, teaching and training these men and women. We had eight people show up. I think there were five men and three women, and um, and so we put we we teach the the leadership through the stresses and pressure of physical, which is really a lot of what we were doing mm -hmm. for four hours at, in Des Moines, right? With you guys, it was similar things. Really trying to teach you, you know, about leadership, teamwork, communication, details, attention to detail, perseverance. Um, all of the, a lot of the things that you talked about, plus a little bit more, right? Over mm -hmm. a 24 hour period. Yeah. And uh, to see them kind of fail a little bit, especially in the beginning, and then hopefully not to repeat those and, and to, to get a little bit better, to continue to come together closer and closer, uh, cohesively as a team by the end of the 24 hours. So, yeah, what was your, your take not having ever experienced? championship leadership 24 you maybe talked to me a little bit about it but probably still didn't really grasp exactly what it was sure and then to come out yeah what was just from that outside looking in uh some first impressions or some thoughts coming out of it yeah. i think first impressions i think you guys are crazy uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i can't i mean i you know i like to run around the block but i don't know about doing that for 24 hours straight. <laughs> yeah. um i think that uh i i think that it's it's such a it's such a mountain to climb, um, you know, doing anything for 24 hours straight. I mean, shit, staying up nowadays for 24 hours, most people can't do or don't. Yeah. Um, but doing anything for 24 hours straight, and this was hard physical labor, um, you know, in and out of the water. You guys were in the water for, I don't even know how long, eight hours, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, probably. You know, you know uh, not not in the water for a full eight hours, but we were, yeah, we were by the river for a good eight hours. Yeah, so, I, 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 you know, it just seemed... It, it, if I was going into it, even if I was training and running, uh, and you know, I was in shape, right. Fit, uh, it would still seem like, man, this is a mountain and it's going to be tough as hell to climb. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. Um, yeah. I, I think, uh, I think the leadership aspect of it, um, mm -hmm. is compounded by pushing through the difficulty of the event. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really where, you know, if you want to make a diamond, you need time and you need pressure, right or yeah. eating pressure and time, whatever. Yeah. Well, you made diamonds that day, right? And that's, yeah. what, that's what you do in 24 hours because you just, you squeeze them so hard. Yeah. Uh, because A, they want to be squeezed. They know they need the kick in the pants. Mm -hmm. uh, but B, because you know they can take it and you know that they're going to come out on the other side like, wow. You know, yeah. it's just yeah. like nothing else seems difficult. I right. got to go to work on Monday morning and all right. You know, yeah. if, I, if I knew my why and I know I can run through a tree, then, you know, nothing's going to stop me. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, you mentioned something there, um, you know, not sure, you know, even if you were in the best shape of your life or whatever, right. Which I would say none of these folks were really truly in the best shape of their life. Maybe Paul Casey is, he's a, he was a fitness coach. He's in pretty good shape. You know, he's got muscle. That doesn't mean he's uh, cardiovascularly, uh, in yeah. shape right mm -hmm. um but he did he did well he he, he put up well he was probably the, the, the guy that showed up in the in the best physical shape um a lot you know some of these weren't some of them weren't in 
great shape, right? Like could definitely improve their their physical fitness coming into the event the next time, but yet they were still able to to get through it. But what you said was, you know, you know, I'm not sure that I could do this, right? That's what I think that's one of the reasons that some people do this. And this event definitely isn't for everyone. I mean, yeah, to, the, the thought isn't super appealing for many, but I do know that what's possible on the other side when these people do get through that 24 hours they realize that number one it's never as bad as they create it to be in their head like they're coming in they're like oh my god this is gonna be crazy 24 hours like i don't know why am i here i can't i don't think i can do this and then they get through it and they're like oh man i can do that and i can do way more than i thought i could and uh, so that's some of the power there too um what were what were maybe some of the the you know as you as you were standing by and watching as we're going through this myself and coach tree um putting these guys through the ringer like what were maybe a few of the the points what are one or two moments or evolutions uh that that really can maybe stuck out to you sure watching uh, seal 24 so you know coach tree first time i met him <laughs> great guy right uh yeah. by nature he's you know he, he's a, a deadly weapon right uh, yeah. but super duper nice walks right out to me, introduces himself. No big deal. Right. Um, it, of course you respect the guy for his history and what he's done, but I mean, I would respect him if he walked up to me or, or I met the guy, you know, in line at the gas station. Yeah. Right. right. Uh, really, really approachable. Um, I, you know, one of the things he said, my, my phone's ringing here. Uh, one of the things he said is that this is simple. Oftentimes in life, tasks are very simple. Doesn't mean they're easy but it's simple, you know? Uh, and, and one of the evolutions you guys are going through by the water was like, um, you know, race into the water, fall backwards, come back out, do 10 burpees or pushups or whatever, get back in line, you know, just typical basic stuff is simple, but it ain't easy. Yeah. And you know, that, that was a, that was a paradigm shift in my mind to think, holy crap. Yeah. I mean, doing what I do is simple, but it ain't easy or going to the next level is simple right if i it's like push-ups just do 100 push-ups a day it's simple a push-up yeah. simple yeah but it ain't easy you <laughs> right. know um yeah. so i thought man that was that that really stuck with me um yeah. and, and you know for, for you and him you know you guys obviously have a, a military background and, and you're badasses by nature um not all of us are like that um and to know that you know a you guys probably went through the same thing but much much worse wherever you were uh, and B, it, it, it really is true. It's simple, but it ain't easy. Yeah. So just keep doing it. You know, yeah. the, the, the end goal is to complete the mission, right? Uh, in this case, it was 24 hours in, in uh, Des Moines. It was to become a better leader to, or maybe to mm-hmm. even understand how to do that. You know? Yeah. For me, like I said, I'm still trying to find my why. So, um, but I, I think that the thing that stuck with me the most from the, from the championship leadership 24 was, uh, it, things in life are simple, but they're not easy. Yeah. So, yeah, I love it. You know, and the, that easy part is, I think that's what gets a lot of people tripped up because they want it to be easy. I mean, you can look at the marketing and all the, the, the products it's, it's in a way it's the next diet, the next fitness program, get abs in six minutes a day. Right. That's sure. It's trying to make it sound like this is e- easy to do or you know technology to to whatever right the Roomba that that, that freaking vacuum that just does it by itself uh, I saw a commercial the other day I'm like yeah it's like so that someone doesn't have to grab a vacuum and walk around for like two minutes to do it themselves right it's the easy button yeah and it's like well you don't really get to none of that is fulfilling right right it's and you f- continue to find these shortcuts or look for shortcuts, really, you're, you, you end up not really living life. That's right. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's simple, but sometimes it's, it, you know, it takes, it, well, it definitely takes effort. Depends on, you know, I mean, just vacuuming the, the living room doesn't take a, a ton of effort. It's just, you get up and you go do it. But when you continue to look for the easy, you stop even wanting to vacuum the, the living room, right? right. Because you're yeah. like, I don't even want to put that much effort into it. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it's, Hey, do the simple, don't make it complex. 
And, you know, sometimes you got to be a little uncomfortable to really feel alive. And, and every time that you are uncomfortable and you get through it and you get on that other side, it feels amazing. hundred percent right. of the time. That's right. You know, one of the things, uh, another thing I was thinking of, um, and I, I forget which event I was at, but at the time I was listening to the speaker. I don't know if it was you or coach tree or one of the other fantastic presenters you had. Um, but I, I thought of a tale about a lobster and I, you know, everybody's heard this lobster tale, right? So not actually tale, but like a story, yeah. um, you know, the lobster for the lobster to grow, it needs to shed its shell. And then it sits underneath a rock until the, I don't know, finds a new shell or forms a new shell or whatever it is. But the point is it, it gets uncomfortable very uncomfortable very because uncomfortable, it's yeah because now it's just exposed to any predator Naked, and it's right? it's only yeah. defense is the shell and once it sheds its shell it's got no defense so it's just sitting there waiting to get eaten um so you know in life right be the lobster you got to yeah. be uncomfortable and like you said when you're uncomfortable enough for long enough maybe 24 hours is probably too long for me but <laughs> um when you're uncomfortable enough just getting through it um, you know, I, I, when you, like you said, when you come out on the other side, it's like, man, yeah, it's, 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 I don't know if it's life-changing or transformational or whatever you want to call it, you know, you just, everything, you know, it's like a, you put a rosy shade of glasses on and everything in life is just as simple as it can be. Right. Yeah. Common denominator. Uh, it's, just, it, and when I came through, uh, the Des Moines, uh, one, it, it, when I got done, I was kind of walking with a swagger, you know, I thought yeah, right. I just, I yeah. just freaking jumped in the dirtiest pond ever yep. <laughs> and I ran a mile after that. And I'm still eating geese shit, you know? Yeah. And, uh, no, and I'm looking around and nobody else in the hotel had done that. I'm like, yeah, I, I just Feels did that. Good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it really did. It really did. So, well, you know, I mean, those are those experiences that number one, a lot of times you probably, you wouldn't do on your own. If it was just you, most likely you're not going to go run the hill or, definitely not going to jump in the, in, in the pond and grab the log and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's, it's this incredible experience that you now have that you can draw on uh, in the future, right. As you continue to move, you be like, you can remember back to, well, hey, all right. When you're starting to think that like this sucks or whatever, you can take back to that. Ah, oh, screw that. I did this and this, you know, at this 24 hour event or this ULW and, and uh, like I can handle this i could do this no problem right so yeah. hopefully that's what it is for you know and then of course you're learning a lot of things and journaling and writing and, and hopefully you take all of that and implement it and apply it to your life so that you can be, be better i mean that's really what it's all about and then also just know you know if you don't think you can do the 24 we all we always have a six and a 12 hour option meeting. So, <laughs> <laughs> just for those that aren't quite ready for the 24. So yeah, so. yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll look those up. <laughs> I think uh, I do. I do want to point out the other thing was at the U UW event. Um, gosh, I just had it. I think it had something to do with journaling. I don't know. It was a nugget of wisdom that you had when you were up there talking to us about it. I'll remember it. I, I forget it right now. I'll remember yeah, it later. No worries. What, um, well, as we start to wrap this up, what, you know, number one, it's it's pretty cool that you were able to come through those two weeks um, back to back, and uh, so yeah. Any any final thoughts? Who, who do you, who, you know? Who would this maybe maybe who would this be uh, for? And and uh, yeah, any final thoughts for anyone that might be considering? Uh, sure, sure. The programs. Uh, I you know I think either of the programs would be for somebody that wants more out of life um, that either feels typecast or uh, I don't want to use the term stuck, but uh, maybe just going down a path that um, they just, th somebody else told them they should be on. And they just, you know, maybe they just don't feel comfortable either in their own skin or in the skin that they're in, you know, in my life, my business and my professional life, I'm sorry, my professional and personal life, I really want to add up and uh, they don't right now. They just don't. And mm -hmm. it's always frustrated me. And I I'm really working towards those two adding up right? So I am who I am with my kids. I am who I am coaching, teaching uh, with my wife, my family, you know, and I, there's just, a, it's just never added up for me. And it's always, it's always frustrated me. And I think the, the ULW event um, really helped me see that. So I think, I, I think it's, I think it's specifically for people who want to grow and, yeah. uh, and get better at life and, and be better uh, personally and professionally. 
yeah. I think the 24 hour event is for crazy people. Um, <laughs> Uh, although I, you know, I think I, I would enjoy doing it. And I think if yeah. I came up on the other side, I'd be like, holy crap. Right. Yeah. I'd, I'd jump off that freaking hill at, yeah. at the end of it, you know, just to parachute down. I think it'd be awesome. And, um, you, know, you know, a lot of people, uh, we look to the crazy people. We're like, <laughs> we're, we're like, you know, it's really not as crazy as you think it is. Number one. And number two, you look at them and you're like, Oh, that's, I wish I was a crazy person. Dude. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. I mean, it's just, it's yeah. a, a little bit of adrenaline you need. Um, but I think the people that, that, that should go to these events, I think everybody should go to these events. If you're, uh, I think if you're over 18 and you're looking to grow, I mean, it's, it's literally, uh, it can, it can be anything to anybody. Uh, and that, I guess that's something else I took away. Like there were people at the ULW event that, uh, were uh, fitness people, right? And, and they have their own brand and they got their own podcast. Uh, there are other people that were realtors. Uh, there's a, another guy, you know, you know, it, he and his son, they, they both did different things or either sold different products or worked in different, uh, you know, different avenues. And it really can be what you want it to be, right? You just, yeah. you gotta, you gotta want to grow. Yeah. You just gotta want to grow. Yeah. Um, and I, I think the 24 hour event is the same thing. Probably uh, for those who who um, are on the path to growing, and who I don't know, maybe just really need a kick in the butt. Yeah. Uh, but I, it, or maybe just really need that physical part. Like for yeah. me, jumping out of a plane is great, but do I need to be physically fit to do that? No. Do I need to know how to operate a parachute? Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. uh, and that's that's the same type of adrenaline. But did I fly the plane up there? Did I know what all the circuitry <laughs> says in the plane? Like, no, man. I just yeah, jumped out, yeah, right? Yeah. So I, I think I think the 24 hour event is is something in my future. Um, but I think I, I would need to be prepared for it. Yeah, definitely. Having the preparation and you know, that's a big part of being a leader is, is pre preparation and, and coming into something. You don't just show up to the event and be like, all right, let's go. Yeah. A big part of the experience is hey, did you prepare? And if you prepare, it's going to be a much different experience than if you don't. We've seen even in class three where you were at, there were people that prepared more than others. And so that the experience is from a physical standpoint is that doesn't get in the way because they can handle that. Now they get to actually learn the things that they really wanted to learn about themselves, about themselves mentally, how they show up as a leader, how they show up um, and, and what kind of mindset do they have. Uh, but when you show up and you don't have it physically <laughs> to the level you would like, you still get through and you're still going to be powerful, but it's just going to be from a different place. Uh, you're going to be thinking a lot more about the physical piece of it and just continuing to be able to keep going and put one foot in front of the other and keep moving and, and all that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. But there's some different dynamics uh, depending on where you're yeah, at, but I, definitely to come in prepared physically is, is important. You know, and that's the neat part about it is it, it'll be different. Uh, you know, if I, if I did that 24 hour event along alongside Paul Casey, for example, um, he would have killed me. Right. I mean, yeah. it, it, it push ups, sit ups, whatever it is. So my experience would have been different, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean it's uh, discredited at all. No. Yeah. You're right. My experience just would have, it would have been personalized, right. It would have been like, mm -hmm. Holy crap, why can't I do 68 push ups in a row? Right. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's what you make it. Uh, yeah. and, and it's, it really applies to everyone. Um, the, I think the prerequisite is outside of the physical part, right? Cause you know, you're not going to be 800 pounds and then come try and run a mile, but the prerequisite for it is you got to want to grow. And, and, and that growth has to be personal or professional or something that's just been nagging you, whatever it is, right? I'm a blue collar yep. guy. Uh, and, and I've always been a blue collar guy and I was raised in a blue collar world and all of our knuckles drag on the ground. Uh, <laughs> my whole family, they just do. And, and I just don't want to, I don't want to have that be my only facet. Yeah, you can change that mold, man. Yeah, so I, I think for me, part of that growth was, hey, you know, I don't, yeah, my knuckles can drag when I want them to, but right. I can also pick my hands up. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, exactly. And for those of you who don't get that reference, just look it up, it's hilarious. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think I, it, it can be what you want it to be. And I, I, I just think that's the, that's the power of it. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I appreciate you coming on and taking some time today. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. It, my pleasure. I look forward to working with you on these events uh, and, and going through a couple in the future. Absolutely. All Have right. Thanks, Nate.